Hi and welcome to today's reflection Uh, and today we're looking at Jesus, the gift of victory that he brings. When we think about victory, I wonder what you normally think about. Usually we think about overcoming somebody or something, don't we? And we usually think about being better or being stronger perhaps than another person, perhaps than another team or being more clever or any one of a number of things that helps us to overcome somebody or something. Obviously we just had the World Cup and seen football teams win because they're a better team than the opposition that they were playing and able to score more goals. So when we think about Jesus and the victory that he brings. You know, Jesus coming in a stable this Christmas, Jesus dying on a cross 30 years later. Those things don't really seem the posture of victory. They don't really seem the type of things that will bring victory uh, for you and for me and, uh, and into our lives. So what is this about, this victory that Jesus is talking about? In fact, the, the New Testament writers say elsewhere that he laid aside his majesty and took the very nature of a servant and humbled himself. You know, and Christmas, one of the wonders about Christmas is just this Jesus leaving behind all that was his in heaven, the majesty, the glory, the power, the authority, laying all that to one side and coming to this earth as a baby. But also it's important to know where we need victory uh, in our lives. And, and uh, you know, there's lots of stuff we can spend time focusing on and trying to be better uh, and imp- improve ourselves, trying to be the best. But actually a lot of things are not relevant. It's William Carey who said, uh, I'm not scared of failure. I'm scared of succeeding at things that don't matter. Jesus focused on victory over sin for you and for me and for this world and over the implications of that sin in our lives and moreover his victory it was one of strength you know we read elsewhere in the new testament that he disarmed the rulers the principalities the powers he made a public show of them on the cross and triumphed over them but that show of strength is not one in a way that you or i would naturally think he chose to come as a baby in a manger He chose to come and put himself at the mercy, if you like, of new teenage parents. We've uh, become grandparents this year, uh, and it never ceases to amaze me. You you can read all the books you want about parenting. You can talk to current parents and ask them what it's like. You can watch so many YouTube videos about how to do it, but nothing really prepares you for the reality of a new, tiny, vulnerable life being totally your responsibility and for you to look after and bring up and, and, the, and the challenge and the, uh, of all of that. And Jesus chose to put himself in that position where Joseph and Mary were his parents to bring him up uh, and to look after him straight away from day one. And then fast forward 30 years, Jesus chose again to make himself vulnerable to the rulers of the day. He chose to face a false trial and trumped up charges to the whim of a Roman governor. And as a consequence, faced death through crucifixion. You know, and that apparently looks the complete opposite of victory. And yet the victory was won in his vulnerability in him subjecting himself to others, in laying down his life that others might find life, and in the willingness to take risks to, in laying down his power. Sometimes for us that's so hard, isn't it? We, we, we want to be in the position of strength. We want to be in the position of making sure we've, we've got it all sorted and that we're in control. And, and this idea of laying that down and laying down our lives is such, such a challenge. I remember watching an interview with Bear Grylls recently. He talked about whenever uh, he he feels fear over doing something, then he challenges himself to do it anyway in order to overcome that fear. And sometimes following Jesus in this way is a little bit like that. We don't like the idea of laying down our life, of sacrificing ourselves, and yet we should identify that and choose to do it ourselves. Because victory in the things that matter isn't found in being the strongest or the bravest or the best but in laying down your own life, in choosing to be vulnerable, in sacrificing our own ego for the sake of others. You might say that Jesus had many knockbacks on the road to victory, people challenging him, people trying to stop him, even the devil in the wilderness tempting him. But as with all knockbacks, it's how you get up that matters. If we could carry this approach to victory into our homes, into our streets, 
into our workplaces and into our teams, imagine what a transformation there would be, what a re-evaluation of what is and what isn't important. So this Christmas, as we stare into the manger at the Christ who brings victory, what is it that we need to lay down? Where do we need to kill our ego? What place do we need to prefer others above ourselves so that the victory Christ brings spills out of you and me and affects those that we love, those that we live among and the communities that we represent? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you this Christmas as we stare again into the manger that you chose to leave everything that was yours in heaven and come to this earth as a baby. And how you showed the way, Lord, for victory in our own lives. And I pray this Christmas, teach us again, Lord, to what it is to lay down our own lives and to follow you and to choose you. And in so doing, Lord, to choose others before ourselves and find the victory that you bring into our lives. Not, not by us being better or stronger or more knowledgeable, but by choosing you. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>